Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be doing a product review. And if you're wondering why I might look a little different, that's because there's no complexion on. And there's no complexion on because today, we are gonna be reviewing the new Hourglass Ambient Edit for holiday 2021. Hey y'all, so <laughs> this is Future Zach editing this Hourglass holiday palette video and when I filmed the video, my studio lighting had kind of blown out what I was seeing in the mirror. So I did not see how intense this blush got. So spoiler warning right here, if you are fair to lights like I am, this palette's just too dark. It's too dark for me and you. Um, Thank goodness though, Hourglass is making palettes that people with darker skin tones can finally use because for so long, some of their products were better suited to people with lighter skin tones like myself. So this is pass for me. I'm gonna hang on to it and see how it does when I fake tan. But if you're my skin tone, don't fake tan. You can skip on it. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit in Universe. So in this palette, you get a finishing powder, two blushes, a highlight, and a bronzer. So without further ado, let's jump right into this palette. So the only re-promoted product in this palette is the finishing powder right here, which is their Finishing Powder Infinity Powder. So that is repromote. You can get that in the permanent collection. And in this palette, it is four grams of product. And the two blushes, the highlight and the bronzer, those are all 1.4 grams. So for the product in here, you are, they are smaller pans. They're roughly kind of the same size as some of their um, travel size products. And this palette retails for $105 here in Canada. Formula, you are getting both formulations of Hourglass blushes. And this top blush, which is called Vibrant Heat, this is one of their ambient strobe lighting blushes. So instead of being mixed with an ambient lighting powder, like one of their finishing powders, this is mixed with one of the strobe lighting highlighting powders, kind of like the highlighting powder in this palette. And the, and the other blush is an ambient lighting blush, which is mixed with one of the ambient finishing powders. So the first shade I'm gonna go into is shade number five, which is Super Natural Strobe Lighting Powder. And I'm gonna use a rougher number 20 brush. I haven't swatched these yet, but looking at the pan and kind of gauging based on the other hourglass highlighters I've tried, this is gonna probably be a little dark for my skin tone. Yeah, can you see that kind of left? an orange stripe on my cheek. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to buff that in. And is if I shear this out and layer over with the blush and bronzer, it should be fine. Going forward, I wouldn't use this as a highlight. And then when we finish the look, I will use another highlight to kind of finish everything off. This shade is just a little too dark for me to wear on its own. So, I'm gonna take shade number five and swatch it right here. So you can see there's shade number five, the highlight shade. So up next, I'm gonna use the ambient lighting blush, which is shade number four. And this shade is called Luminous Rose. So since I know this particular shade will be too dark for my skin tone, I'm gonna kind of merge it between the placement of a blush and a bronzer. And I'm gonna be using the Refer number five brush as it is quite a light brush, meaning it's not very dense. And I'm gonna start back on the cheek and I'm gonna pull this forward, working to overlap that highlight color. So you can see this color, it is darker. It has more of like a kind of burnt, rusty berry tone. So it's got elements of berry as well as like a warm copper tone. Luckily, this is going quite well with the eyes. I'm gonna take a little bit on my temples just to kind of balance everything out because if I kind of leave everything to the cheeks I'm going to look very sickly. So now we are going to swatch that one. So that is shade number four ambient lighting blush in the shade luminous rose. So I'm going to swatch right here next to the highlight. It's roughly the same intensity as the highlight. It's just more of a kind of berry tone. Now I'm going to go in with shade three, which is the ambient lighting bronzer, and this is called glistening bronze light. So to apply that, I'm going to use my rougher number 22, and I'm going to barely put the brush into the bronzer. You can see it's quite pigmented. So I'm going to start, so I'm going to start further back 
into the temple and work it in. Yeah. Right now, the combination of the blush we just applied to the darker of the two blushes, as well as this bronzer, for me right now in winter, it's gonna be a little too dark to kind of get away with. However, these colors are perfect for me in the summer. So this will definitely come in handy when on vacations. And for this color, I normally put a little bit of bronzer on my nose and chin. I'm not gonna do that with this just because it's too dark. I am going to take my refer number 22 that I just used to apply the bronzer and I'm gonna mix into the highlight, the first blush we applied and the bronzer to get a mix of all three shades. Knock off most of the excess. I'm gonna take a little bit onto the sides of my neck just to even everything out. So that way it's not as jarring, but as you can see, and compared to my arms and my hands though, I'm looking a little too bronzed. We are gonna go into shade number two, which is the strobe lighting brush. And this blush is called Vibrant Heat. So I'm gonna apply this with a rougher number 24. And I'm just going to swirl into the shades, tap it off. And for this shade, I'm gonna pop it on the apple of the cheek and blend back. So you can see this blush is quite pigmented. So for the other side, I'm gonna tap my brush off and go lightly. I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit more. So if you were my skin tone and you wanna get this palette, you might really enjoy it. It is the lighter of the two palettes. I believe there is another palette coming out that is geared more for lighter skin, or for darker skin tones. But if you wanna go with this palette, you're my skin tone, just be careful, it's quite dark. I'm gonna take my rougher number 25 brush, and I used this earlier to apply my face powder, and I'm just gonna buff over everything and see if I can't soften things out, because I'm looking a little pigmented. So I didn't swatch shade number three, which is the bronzer. So we're gonna go right here. So here's the highlight. Here is the darker of the two blushes. So here is the bronzer. Here is the blush I just applied. So two passes of the blush. And you with the rougher number 25 brush, and I'm gonna go into shade number one, which is that infinity lighting powder. So this is their finishing powder. Now I've seen reviews on this because this product came out by itself a while back. I was intrigued by it, but then for some reason, I decided not to purchase it. And I don't remember why. Not bad, it's dulling everything down. However, I feel like this powder is making my overall complexion darker. So we will see. I'm gonna finish off the other side. Now, I'm also gonna take some on my neck because I feel like I need to really concentrate on balancing out tones because this palette is a fair bit deeper than my skin tone. And just for good measure, we're gonna swatch that Infinity Lighting Powder next to the blush. Even that's a little bit darker for my skin tone. What are my final thoughts on this palette? I think the textures are beautiful. I do like seeing that this palette will work for people who are deeper complected than I am. However, if you are my complexion or lighter, be careful because this palette does run a little deep. For me, I make, I like it. I'm definitely keeping it because this is going to be a palette that I really enjoy when it's warmer and when I'm in my kind of like self tanning season. So that is going to be great for this because these are like the perfect depth of color for that time of year. I'm going to take a little bit of my Jaclyn Cosmetics Lip Pencil and Macaron and I'm just going to kind of roughly fill in the perimeter of my lip. And I have an hourglass lip color I want to use. So this is one of their Confessions Refillable Lipsticks. This is in the shade I woke up. And then with this shade, it's a little bit darker than I normally have to go for. So I like to blend it in with my fingers. So now that we kind of have the holiday palette on, I wanted to do a little bit of a quick overview of all of the hourglass products I have in my collection. And Hourglass is a very polarizing brand. I either really, really like what they do or I really don't like what they do. So we will start with the foundation I have on. That is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. For years, I heard so many different bloggers and friends talk about this and talk about how much they loved it. 
It took me forever to find a match. The closest match I can find is shade cream, and it's a little bit lighter than my skin. It's a little too neutral. I need something slightly pinker, but the shade closest to this with a pink undertone makes me look orange, and the one that is more of a warm undertone makes me look kind of sickly and yellow. So this is the closest match I have. I've tried applying this with fingers, a dry sponge, damp sponge, different brushes. It just always looks really heavy and cakey on my skin, and this foundation is expensive. Not a fan. Travel size of the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer, and this is also in the shade Cream. Now, I do like this a lot better. Depending on the time of year, like now when my skin's a little bit more dry or dehydrated, and I apply it under my eyes, it can look a little heavy, can look a little cracky. However, in the summer, when it's warmer, when it's more humid, it's not a bad concealer. And even though these two are both called Cream, this, like I said, it's a little too neutral for my skin tone. And the Vanish Concealer, it's slightly too peach. So neither of them are a great match. If I had a shade right in between these two colors, it would be perfect. Overall kind of overview for this Hourglass Vanish Concealer. It's nice when I finish up this mini size, I won't buy the full size. Let's move on to a positive note, and that is the Hourglass Veil Eye Primer. I love this. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know how much I love this primer. It's phenomenal. Can't recommend it enough. So this is another kind of like deluxe sample size. This is their Veil Setting Powder. When this first launched here in Canada, I remember I ran to Sephora, I purchased it, I didn't like it. For some reason, I just, I couldn't quite recall why I didn't like this, but I ended up passing it on to a friend. She loved it. And then I saw this was like a deluxe sample size that you could get with an order on Sephora if you spent a certain amount. So I was like, I can't remember why I didn't like that. So then I got this deluxe sample size and I remember why I didn't like it. For me, it just looks heavy on the skin. I've tried using a small amount. I've tried using more. I've used dense brushes, less dense brushes, sponge. It just always looks really heavy and it's quite yellow and it makes me look quite sickly. So not a fan of this. Now, a powder I love from Hourglass and this is one of the most perfect finishing powders of ever. This is the Ambient Lighting Powder and this is in the shade Ethereal Light. This is more of a neutral white powder. If you are darker than me, you might be able to use this as a very subtle highlighter. However, if you were my skin tone or lighter, this is a beautiful, beautiful finishing powder. I am going to remove the excess from that hourglass or from my rougher number 25. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this powder and I'm just going to buff over my skin because this will help to lighten up and brighten everything up just to get me back to more of a realistic color for my skin tone. I really enjoy this powder. This isn't my favorite powder to set my complexion with. However, they are labeled as finishing powders and I like to use them as finishing powder. So end of my makeup routine, after everything's on, I like to buff it in and I like to use these to buff around the perimeter of my eyeshadow to make sure everything is blended out. So absolutely love these. And there's a few different tones and they have a new mini trio of three new shades that are geared towards darker complexions, which is a market that Hourglass has kind of been sleeping on, but now they're finally catching up with it. So I feel better about supporting this brand. So up next, we have the Hourglass Vanish Strobe Stick. This is a beautiful, beautiful texture. It's a beautiful product. I bought a shade that was just too dark for me. I bought this when I was at Nordstrom, and at Nordstrom, if you're an employee, you can't really return things without a reason, or at least that's how it was at my store. So I bought shade Rose Gold. It's too dark for me. So even though I like this, I've thought about picking up the lighter shade. I think it's called like Pink Flash or something like that. It's nice, but there are other cream highlighters that I prefer that are significantly cheaper than this. So if the shade jumps out to you, then give it a try. So another newer product from Hourglass, I've talked about this on my channel in a blush video. I'll put that link down below, but this is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Blush, and this is in the shade Loyal. So this shade was described as a rosewood and it's more of like a muted terracotta 
coral color. It's beautiful. If I have a fake tan on, it's really nice. But for me and my normal fair to light skin with more neutral to cool muted undertones, it just looks like an orange stripe on my face. So I'm not a huge fan of the colors in this range. If they had something slightly cooler, less orange, I might really enjoy these. But another one I like to hang on to for when it's a little bit warmer and I have a little bit more color going on. So nice if a color jumps out to you. Iridescent strobe light. I'm going to grab my rougher number 20 brush and I'm just going to go right up here on top of my cheekbone and brighten it up. Can you see just how beautiful that shade is? I really, really enjoy this powder. It's a very subtle highlight. It's not one that emphasizes skin texture. The shades are pretty flexible and I really, really enjoy this powder. It's not going to give you a blinding from space highlight, but if you want something that is closer to like a your skin but better natural glow with a little extra oomph, these are great. And the shade I love for my skin tone is Iridescent Strobe Light. Another product that I absolutely love from Hourglass is their bronzers and the shade I have in my collection is Nude Bronze Light. So this is one of the newer shades they came out with and I really like this. It has a nice kind of peachy undertone. So if I don't have a lot of color to my skin or I'm kind of like now at my kind of fair skin tone, I want to add a little bit of warmth but I want to add a little bit more kind of vibrancy to my skin, a little bit more punch. I will use this because the nice peachy undertone kind of makes my skin look a little bit more lively when I'm kind of feeling a little dull. So this is a great one. There is definitely room for expansion within the colors because the darkest shade, which I believe is called Radiant Bronze Light, which has more of like a cool ready undertone, that's another shade I can use on myself. So if it gets away with me, you might be able to work with it on deeper skin tones, but I won't, I don't feel like it will go to the deepest skin tones. Real quick, let's touch on the Hourglass Confessions lipsticks. These are nice. They're nice. They're they're beautiful lipsticks. The packaging is a work of art. They are just very expensive. Like if you go to my website, the Zach Dooley, and you go up top to where it says Makeup Library, you scroll down to find lipsticks and then find the Hourglass Confessions refillable lipsticks. And then you scroll over and you look at cost per gram or cost per mil you will see that these are the most expensive lipsticks I own. Like, and that's comparing these to something like my Tom Ford lipsticks, Charlotte Tilbury, Hermes. They are the most expensive lipsticks and the texture is nice and creamy. If a color jumps out to you, great. Um, I just won't repurchase. Talking about expensive, another palette or another product I reviewed on my channel earlier in the summer is this one. This is the Hourglass Curator Eyeshadow Palette. So you get five grams of product because each of these singles are one gram of product and there are five of them. So that's five grams of product. And here in Canada, the singles are sold individually and you have to buy the case. So that brings you to a grand total of $219 for five grams of eyeshadow. I bought these. I like the colors. I'm wearing them today. It's a nice, the shades I picked out, I will have them listed in the description box down below. They're beautiful shades. They're just, if you compare them for the price of something like Tasha Nona, Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, MAC, they're, they're nice, but they're not worth the extreme price tag because each one gram eyeshadow, I think, I believe it retails for $39. So that's $39 a gram. So another one most expensive per gram in my collection. Now, an hourglass video would not be an hourglass video if we did not talk about these. These are the Scattered Light Pressed Glitter Shadows. The one I have is in the shade Reflect. I'm just gonna take that on my ring finger and run that over my eyelid. Can you see that beautiful sheen it gives the eyes? Absolutely love these. And these are another product that's great. I remember when I was at Nordstrom and I was at the Mac working at the, so I remember when I was at Nordstrom working at the Mac counter, Hourglass was right next to the Nordstrom counter. So sometimes if I was doing a makeover and someone wanted something simple, just like a liner, mascara, a little bit of something on the lids, I would always run over to Hourglass grab one of these because they are perfect. You can make them really dramatic. You can make them like a soft, 
kind of romantic shimmer on the eyes. It's They're such flexible and versatile products. I really, really love these. They are wonderful. Quickly, another realm of our, another set of products from Hourglass I really enjoy are their brushes. I own three of their brushes. When I worked at Nordstrom, I got to play with a lot of their brushes because their counter was next to the matte counter I worked at. In my collection, I have the Vanish Concealer Brush, their Angled Liner Brush, and their All Over Lid Shader Brush. These are great. The only thing I feel like some people might not like is the angled eyeliner brush. I personally like it because it's quite a chubby, thicker angled brush, which I like for getting a thicker line on. However, if you're someone who likes to do really thin, really precise work, you might find this a little too thick and flimsy. So really like them. These are all synthetic brushes. For a while, these were my favorite synthetic brushes. However, they've kind of been replaced by BK Beauty. BK Beauty, their texture or the quality of the fibers is similar, if not a little bit softer. They're also fully synthetic, vegan, cruelty-free, and the price point's better in my opinion. So these are nice, but now there's a new range of synthetic brushes I like a little bit more. My favorite product from Hourglass are their blushes. I have four. So I have three of the ambient lighting blushes and then I have one of the ambient strobe lighting blushes. So we will start with their ambient lighting blushes first. And the first shade we will talk about is the first one I ever purchased. And that is the Colt Classic Mood Exposure. Mood Exposure is just one of my favorites. You can see it's just this really beautiful kind of murky muted mauve color that is not a really kind of cold mauve. It has a little bit more of a slight warmth to it that makes it a little bit more lively so it doesn't look draining on the skin. It's a really beautiful shade and it's the second one of these. So I have completely panned one of these and this is my second one. Absolutely love Mood Exposure. The second shade I purchased is also another favorite. This is the shade Sublime Flush. I've used this several times on my channel. This was a shade that originally was in their Ghost palette, which I believe was two holidays ago. And this is a beautiful kind of like mid-tone, neutral pink with a little bit of a lavender vein running through in the marbling. It is absolutely beautiful and I feel like if you were fair to light medium skin tones, this is just a really beautiful brightening shade. It's stunning on the skin. And my most recent shade is questionable because it's quite dark, but this is the shade At Night. I love this color. It is this really kind of beautiful maroon orange color and this one for me really stood out because some of you might know I am from a small town in Virginia and my hometown is quite close to Blacksburg, Virginia which is where Virginia Tech is and Virginia Tech's colors are maroon and orange and this just made me think of Virginia Tech and it made me give like it gave me like warm fuzzy feelings of home so I purchased it for sentimental reasons and I don't use this a lot as a blush because it's dark. It's beautiful as a one and done eyeshadow though. And my final hourglass and another one of my favorites is the Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush Formula and I have the shade Incandescent Electra. So Hourglass calls this color a cool peach and they are pretty spot on. It is a beautiful kind of cool peachy tone. It barely shows up on the back of my hand. I am going to add a little bit to my cheek just to kind of brighten things up. So you can kind of see there, it just adds this beautiful glassy shine to the cheeks. This is already quite a blush heavy look, so more is more. Hourglass's blushes are definitely one of my standout products. And a quick recap on everything. These are all the Hourglass products I have in my collection. Quick reviews, most of them I've talked about on my channel before. I feel like the only things I have not talked about on my channel up to this point have been the foundation and the concealer. And that's just because the foundation I've owned for a year, year and a half, don't like it, don't reach for it, don't like how it looks on my skin. And the concealer is just something that it's not bad, it's not great, it's just I forget about it. Everything else I've talked about on my channel, I really enjoy everything else. The new holiday palette, 
So the new ambient lighting palette for the holidays, it's a beautiful palette. If you are my skin tone or lighter, unless you absolutely love the colors, I feel like you might be able to skip on it because it is dark. If you like statement colors that are a little bit darker, a little bit more vibrant on the skin, you might also really enjoy this. But for me, go for it if you are more of a light, light medium skin tone to medium tan. And then the darker palette, I feel like darker skin tones will absolutely love. So really nice. I like seeing that Hourglass is doing more with their shade selections and being more inclusive. But for me, it's pretty and I, I know I'll love it in the summer. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. And before you go, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye y'all.